Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to make a final video on how to make a MOBA through its entirety. From start to finish, you are going to learn what you need, who you need, how long it will take, how much it will cost, and what type of pants it wears. The lot. This video is a thank you to all the subscribers over the past year, as I will not be continuing the MOBA series. I'm very sorry about this, but in order to expand my audience, I need to expand my videos. Anyway, I'll talk more about that in the end. For now, we're going to jump straight into it with getting an idea. Obviously, you've clicked on this video because you have an idea and want to get it made. Ideas can sometimes be more or less malleable. This means that it is most likely going to change as you progress. Having tried hundreds of ideas myself, I can say that the best ones are the simple ones. If you plan to recreate League of Legends, which a lot of you are here for, unfortunately it is going to take a lot longer than you predict. If you have an original idea, then there will be very few resources online that you can use to make your project come to life. If you can google how to make your project, then your idea isn't original. Derivative ideas always work because your players are familiar with a lot of the functions and simplifying a game like League of Legends is going to do better than a pure original. Now we need to choose an engine. A game engine is like the engine of a car and is used to edit, compile and build your game. Basically it can run the core components that make up your game. I've made a video debating Unity and Unreal both of which are the most common platforms. Depending on your skill I implore you to check out the video which lets you decide what is best for you. For the sake of being basic I'm going to use Unity examples in this video. Ultimately, if you have the skill you can build your own game engine, but seeing as you are watching a YouTube tutorial right now, I'm assuming that you do not. Once you've picked your game engine, then we need to understand a programming language. I know C Sharp, which is used in Unity and would recommend it to anybody starting out in programming. It is simple to learn, but if you need help, I've got MOBA specific tutorials in my earlier videos. Once you've become acquainted with manipulating your way around code, you can now move on to running servers. Unfortunately, this means learning another two programming languages which are PHP and MySQL. PHP or Hypertext Processor is a general web based language which you are going to use to handle your server side scripts. MySQL or Structured Query Language is what you'll use to hold the information in the database. A database is basically an information bank that stores variables you want your players to have access to, for example username, password, level, icon number, IP, RP, XP, friends list, champion ownership list, skin ownership list and basically every other number you don't want want your players to be able to manipulate from home. If you do not have the patience to learn this however, you can eliminate PHP and replace it with the Unity asset Photon. Photon takes care of your entire server side, it comes with inbuilt code that severely saves you time. Unfortunately it is limited to 20 CCU on a free plan, this means 20 concurrent users or players max at any given time. You can however upgrade but they charge a large fee for the amount of players you will be supporting. On the positive side they have servers in most continents and it is incredibly easy to implement. If you struggle using it in your game you can always check out my earlier networking tutorials that cover the basics. Now we have a server side set, we can begin programming the client side. Understanding the network relationship is easy, the client executable runs player visuals, input and constantly communicates with the server. The server is busy sending each client information about the other player's whereabouts and shenanigans, this is done using remote procedural calls or RPCs, basically sending the network any information you want others to receive. This can include movement positions, targeting creeps or players and statistics like health, mana and speed. So each player is synced to the network using the fundamental scripts, click to move, click to attack and a form of statistics. Basically after programming these scripts you are free to make additions but I would recommend saving that until after the prototype build. Once the core components are done we move on to the modular build of the abilities. Basically we want one script that can perform any type of ability. For example we have skill shots, area of effect, damage over time, next melee or range shot deals extra damage and increased statistics like range or speed. Link these to the core scripts via RPCs across the network to cause damage or heal other players in sync with everyone else. The essence of your game should have emerged and by now you can play test with your friends, obviously it doesn't have a look just yet. We're about a fifth of the way there as we head into 3D design. 
Now we have the functions all set, we need to make some characters. Brainstorming ideas on pad is the best way for me, but we all have our favourites. To create a character you need a theme to your game, let's say you select an alternate 1920s. You'll need to do some research into the history and come up with characters using the same theme but distinct features, like moustaches for example. Writing down each character traits usually helps when it comes to conceptual artwork. I like to craft a character around the 7 deadly sins, giving a rating for each sin and a small description about their history. Obviously they all follow the same theme so write down any traits that do not follow this theme. Once we have our character sheet completed we can move on to conceptual artwork. This is the process of getting the base character drawn out into a visual form or artwork. I recommend programs like Manga Studio which allows for more realistic brushes and blending of colors. Photoshop and Coral Painter work fine but in my opinion concept art is about simply redrawing a character 10 times to try and find the look that you want. It is also recommended that you buy a tablet as it can be extremely helpful to get your art style involved instead of tampering with a mouse but if you do only have a mouse I would recommend Lazy Nozomi Pro. This program smooths out any lines drawn in Photoshop and is most definitely worth the purchase even if you have a tablet. Once you have made the character look you are going to need to make a two angle sketch with the proportions for the modeling. The two sided sketch needs to represent a front angle and a side angle so we can easily make the model. Notice that the character also needs to be in a T pose. This is for the rigging and animation process later on. Now we can start modeling our character using our program of choice. I choose to use Silo 2. If you are new to modeling it is incredibly easy to understand and is also quite cheap on the Steam store. The downsides to using this software is that it only caters to the modeling side and not rigging or animation. On a positive it does have a UV unwrapping tool. There are a few Silo 2 tutorials out there but if you want an all-in-one software that does modeling, UVs, rigging, animation and textures and is also free then I recommend using Blender. If you want a detailed description of the modeling there are thousands of tutorials out there but if you only need the basics I have a tutorial that follows the entire process from scratch to unity. Next up we want to rig our character for animation basically this is the process of adding bones to your model. Picturing your model as a skin and your rigging as a skeleton is often used to describe this process. Later in animation the bones or rigging move and the model acts upon the movement. So when animating we can also use Blender. This is similar to tweening animation in Adobe Flash. Select position 1, frame 1 and set skeletal position. Move ahead for a split second and add position 2. The bones will move between these two points smoothly. Repeat this process until you have the basics idle, walk, run, death, attack abilities 1, 2, 3 and 4 and maybe a dance animation. Take a look into legacy and mechanism animations. I would recommend you use legacy animation type which is when you your character remains centered in their animation space. Now we can UV unwrap. This is basically the process of unwrapping your model's skin so we can apply a 2D image to a 3D model. Using Blender select where you want the seams to be. The seams are where the cuts are made in the model's skin and the UV will unwrap from this position. Remember to keep your seams hidden. They are rather visible if made incorrectly. If your MOBA is top down, place seams on the underside of your character. After this we can begin to texture our character. I prefer Photoshop for this process but you can use Blender as well. Not much to explain here, the art that is drawn is basically like painting onto a Warhammer model. Now we have a full model animated and textured ready for Unity. Import that bad boy along with the textures and now we can add the model to our existing game and make an animation handler. Remember animation should all be handled by the clients not the servers. Large amounts of information are going to slow down your network. You can also create a map using the same method as above. Next up is GUI. This is basically creating visualized versions of some numbers, communicating with the player what their stats are and the stats of other players. This can be in multiple forms. Some people prefer numbers which are useful when it comes to scores but bars are better for larger numbers. They display things that shouldn't need to be stared at such as XP and cooldowns. Also included is a mouse cursor which you can also find on my channel. So we have a playable game with characters, a map and fully networked clients and servers. The S of any MOBA. Some more important parts still need to be done such as soundtrack. You can find a video about that here. Basically a background theme that doesn't destroy the core gameplay by overpowering it. Also sound effects which can be achieved using Foley or if you are really lazy you can always download a sound bank off the internet. Dialogue which involves hiring voice actors and equipment for sound recording. Particles for the visual display of abilities. These can also be animated models or both if you like. Particles are made up of 2D sprites 
Alright, this process can take some time to get the look that you want, but Unity has very easy controls for this. Matchmaking is used to pair bond your players into a game. This can be achieved with a game launcher like in League of Legends or through a main menu system in a standalone executable like Dota 2. If you choose to make a menu in the game, you will require the use of scene management, fairly easy to understand through Google. Next you have your artwork found in the loading bars, character selection, icons and in-game purchases, followed by the user interface such as buttons, borders, bars and creating your own font. All of which need to follow the same theme as our characters and environment or will feel out of place. You need to be able to manage the financial side of your game which includes microtransactions, marketing campaigns, distribution. You need to be able to sell the product in the attempt to match the quality of your competitors, attending interviews, controlling media, creating and distributing cinematics and trailers, patent designs, maintaining servers and handling tax. This is not a project for a single person and it took 10 minutes to explain this. Listen guys very carefully, if you have made it this far into the video, good on you. You know the amount of dedication a project like this takes. I know that there may be a temptation to have a go at doing this by yourself, but unfortunately through personal experience it doesn't happen fast and it doesn't happen well. If you don't believe that I have enough experience to make this judgement, then look back at the last 10 minutes. I've literally explained to you every single component. I've tried and learnt the basics enough to get through the minimum required level. I could talk for ages about my experience with the programs, but I'm not here to give you tutorials anymore. I'm here to tell you the components of building a MOBA. You need to know all of the above inside and out, or you need an artist, a programmer, a 3D artist, a network specific programmer, a 3D animator, designer for GUI, composers, sound engineer, marketing manager, accountants and lawyers. Making a game like this requires the company of others. I have a firm belief that indie developers are more than capable of achieving this, but I've never seen or heard of a single man doing it alone. Basically nobody is good at everything. We all have our flaws, so take my advice and work with others and it will take no longer than the effort you put in and will cost no more than the software that you choose. Game dev is a team game and you can only do it alone on a court but this genre is like a field. I did not mean to discourage a few of you, this video is supposed to inspire you to fit the standards of today. Hopefully I see your projects in the near future. Thanks for watching everyone, so those returning subscribers still watching, I've stopped the MOBA tutorials completely. Everything I've shown you is a personal way of making a MOBA. It is up to you to figure out your own methods. This is the essence of game dev, don't copy others, learn from others, I've seen some really awesome projects over the last year and I'm happy I've started this channel, but now I can and want to move on to more broad topics. There's heaps of information to get out of my head so I hope that you understand. As for this video, I hope you know what you need to do and who you need to do it with. Oh, and a MOBA probably wears jeans.